new hope for HIV patients. University of Maryland and Duke University researchers have designed a new vaccine that was able to stimulate an immune response against HIV's protective shield. HIV virus cells are covered with a protective protein called GP120, which itself is covered by a sugar shield to help bolster its defenses. Some infected individuals who can keep the virus at bay without medication often have antibodies that attack the protein. There has been little success in creating a similar vaccine because the sugars found in the shield resemble sugars in the human body. It's also difficult to engineer antibodies that can be effective against the multiple strains of HIV, which frequently mutate. Using a synthetic chemistry method, scientists have now designed a vaccine combining a GP120 fragment and a sugar molecule and tested it on HIV-infected rabbits. The vaccine prompted the rabbit's immune systems to produce antibodies that physically bound to GP120 found in four dominant HIV strains. It takes roughly two years to build immunity against HIV, so despite sticking to the virus, the antibodies weren't able to prevent further infection. But the vaccine's ability to induce a strong immune response in a short amount of time is encouraging, and researchers believe further studies can produce a vaccine that can ultimately neutralize the deadly virus. Here's how science is fighting AIDS. AIDS-resistant kids found in South Africa. 60% of young kids infected with the human immunodeficiency virus, aka HIV, will usually die within two years. But for a select group of African children, a built-in defense is keeping the virus at bay. Scientists discovered about 170 HIV-infected children in South Africa who did not develop AIDS despite having high levels of the virus in their blood. They called the children non-progressors. The children aged five and older were infected in the womb and remain healthy even without receiving antiviral treatment. In most patients, HIV cripples the immune system by infecting CD4 T cells that respond to the viral threat. Higher activation results in more widespread infection, often leading to AIDS. By contrast, low levels of immune activation are seen in non-progressors, whose weak immune systems don't engage the virus. Their T cells were found to have low levels of the receptor protein CCR5, which is used by the HIV virus to enter cells. Fewer particles get in, resulting in fewer cells dying. This ultimately stops the virus from infecting target cells and has previously been seen in monkeys. A similar immunity is found in a small percentage of adults, but in their case, mounting a strong immune response is the best way to beat the virus. Virtually virus-free for nine years. A South African nine-year-old has become the third HIV-infected child in the world to go into remission, suggesting that early treatment may be effective in combating the deadly virus. Antiretroviral drugs help suppress HIV in infected individuals, but must be taken regularly to prevent viral rebound or further progression. This was not the case for one child whose viral load went from high to undetectable after only 40 weeks of antiretroviral treatment during infancy. The child, now nine, is still in remission. Advanced tests found that while a tiny number of the nine-year-old's immune cells contained HIV, the virus was dormant and unable to replicate. The South African child had been part of a 2007 clinical trial that randomly assigned babies born with HIV to receive antiretroviral treatment either immediately or only once they showed symptoms. Scientists believe the early treatment helped curb the disease, but say there may be other factors that contributed. At the very least, there is hope that long-term remission is possible, and with further studies, could even be induced in other infected infants. Bye-bye, HIV. Researchers may have finally found a way to eliminate the HIV reservoirs that often remain hidden in the body. HIV spreads by taking over a cell's DNA and using it to make copies of itself. Most AIDS treatments are engineered to block this replication cycle, effectively stopping the spread of the virus. But though these drugs allow patients to live longer, they do not rid the body of the virus, which hides in reservoirs and re-emerges once treatment stops. A new kick-and-kill approach aims to get rid of these reservoirs by using a synthetic molecule to wake up the dormant virus, which will then be eliminated by antiretroviral therapy. 
When tested on HIV-infested mice that have been given antiretroviral drugs, 25% of the once dormant virus cells died within 24 hours of being reactivated. With further development, researchers believe the technique could lower the viral reservoir enough for infected patients to stop antiretroviral treatment. The molecule will also need to be tested on larger animals before it can go to human trials. Are cows the cure for HIV? U.S. government-funded HIV research in cattle may hold promise for future HIV treatments. In a study, scientists injected four calves' flanks with HIV. The cattle's own immune system first produced antibodies that nullified 20% of the virus in 42 days and counteracted 96% of the HIV virus within 381 days. Researchers theorized the cattle were able to do this due to their robust digestive system that encounters a variety of bacteria. The research may point to cattle being a source of medicine in the future.